everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable week to this point. Hump day, people, hump day. Uh, whatever it is you're out there doing, uh, whether you're pursuing a new career, whether you're starting a business, whether you're fighting in the communities, uh, helping to empower the less unfortunate, uh, the less fortunate, uh, whatever it is you're doing that you believe in that you want to elevate at don't give up it's going to be some rough days it's going to be some difficult moments but remember what i always say if you're still breathing you're still in the fight uh look you know the routine if you uh are any way uh empowered helped uh, by the content that you see on this this uh this channel click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. For those of you who believe in the work we do uh, at The Black Voice, but more importantly, the Odyssey Project uh, in research and program development and in community advocacy uh, for everything from uh, mass incarceration, recidivism, mental health, mental illness, uh, intimate partner violence and homicide, uh, childhood sexual abuse, ch uh, adverse childhood experiences, and other trauma uh, related situations, things we've done for 30 plus years now, and you continue to do so. If you believe in that and you want to, because if you want, you want to ensure that it continues, we're asking that you look in the description box and support the work we do. The work we do is invaluable, and I'm glad to see it moving forward. I'm, I'm excited about some of the things that we've already been able to do this year with the symposium, community symposium on epigenetics and generational trauma and how it's related to mass incarceration and, and recidivism and to provide resources to the community. That's an ongoing thing. There's a series we will do throughout this year. I'm excited about that. Uh, got to speak with uh, youth that I speak with annually on this past Sunday, uh, working with a number of different uh, families on a more intimate level in things that are going on in their homes. So I'm doing it on, on a number of different levels. The thing is, what the work we do isn't free, it costs. The average research project is, the average is 30 to $50,000. Uh, the more uh, instant, uh, intensive and extensive research programs can range anywhere from 250000 to over a million. And we are being studied far more than we're studying ourselves or we're studying our enemies. And it is reflected in the outcomes. We've got to do a better job. So that's that. And on that note, what I want to talk to you about now is I just got through having a meeting with a friend who is a playwright but also works and teaches theater in schools and she was just revealing to me what I already know because I'm constantly at school dealing with stuff for families that come get me about all kind of crazy stuff and we're losing our kids I got a kid here in Houston man great high school football player 4.1 grade point average uh, was on his way to play ball in college and was shot dead at a house party. He wasn't even the target. He was just there. Some kids or somebody decided to fire at the house that the party was going on from about a block away. So they had no idea who they were going to hit. They didn't care. And you got to think about where are we at right now in our influence on our children. Because these are our children. Might not be our children directly or uh, from biology, but in the general sense, the children that are coming from our generation and our children are the ones who are doing this. And you gotta think, there is a generation that thinks life isn't that big of a deal. Now there are a lot of things that are desensitizing uh, the Gen Zers. Uh, there are a lot of things. Number one, these games that they live on where you die and you come back to life and you have more power and you can go get this and get this and heal yourself and all this stuff desensitizes them to death. Death happens every day on that game and nobody has to deal with the outcome. They aren't able to project. They haven't been given any sense of filial responsibility to understand the dynamic 
ecological imp organic ecological impact of taking a life how it not only impacts the person that you killed that person you ended any potential they had you ended any opportunity for them to live out the fullness of their life and do things and touch lives and live in their purpose but you also negatively impacted their entire family you shook and destroyed uh the peace the sanctity the hope of a family for an indefinite amount of time but you didn't stop there because see now there are going to be people looking for you to lock you up and that's going to impact your family your family's going to have to deal with the fact that they're probably going to lose you for a prolonged period of time if not the rest of your life then your, your family's got to deal with the fact that they are the family whose kid killed the other kid and these kids can't project like that. They can't think like that. They can't think with a connectivity to their actions. They are so disconnected. And it's a, a lot of it's on us. We're not properly socializing our children. We're not properly developing them. We uh, were told by Frederick Douglass it is so much easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. And we're raising them broken. They're broken in their ability to feel empathy. They're broken in their uh, ability to realize, accept, and actualize their responsibility, uh, the potential of their responsibility, and on and on and on. We are losing on so many areas that we can't get to a point. I was talking to one of my clients today. We can't get to a point where we're talking about what they are doing. We can't keep screaming the white man when we're failing in our own things. You know one of my favorite quotes. The African proverb that says, if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. It's the enemy on the inside that's gutting us right now. It's the enemy on the inside. It's our sons killing our daughters. It's our sons beating our daughters. It's our sons impregnating our daughters and then not taking care of them. It's our sons shooting our other sons. And that's on us. We are going to have to rally. We're going to have to come together, unify, get out of this individualized mindset that if it don't bother me, if it ain't got nothing to do with me, I, I'm good with it mentality and actually step up and say, you know what? Not on my watch. It is unbelievable, the stuff. I mean, she literally got assaulted. And here's the problem because they don't pay the teachers because they don't provide them a safe paid place in which to teach. They've driven all the good teachers out and they're dry. The few that are left are on their way out the door for, 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 a mul for multitudinous reasons. Like I said, you're not paying me for the value that I'm producing. I'm literally representing the future potential of the children of this generation and you're not compensating me uh, adequately for it. Second of all, you're not providing a safe space for me in which to do it. I'm literally in a place where my life is on the line. Then I'm in a place where I'm constantly being disrespected. And this is the thing I've got to wake up and expect to come to with passion. And, and then the parents will show up and defend the wrong behavior of their children to the point of violence. So now I don't have to just deal with your violent kids. I got to deal with you being violent. And so it's a reflection that we failed in the last couple of generations. And the thing is, the average person is going to say, there ain't nothing you can do about it. No, you die doing something about it. You die fighting to fix what's broken. You die at whatever age you die at doing something positive. You don't sit up and surrender to negative circumstances in life. You don't sit up and surrender to what's not happening because of X, Y, Z. You stand up, you square your shoulders and said, okay, we didn't do a good job here. What can be done? And there are things that can be done. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be cheap. But the alternative is to unleash a bunch of kids who aren't prepared because they're not properly and adequately educated, which isn't just the school system's responsibility in the first place, but they're not educated, they're not prepared, they're not going to be earners, they're going to be the people ba whose backs get stood on for everybody else to make it, which is the story of our life in this country, and we literally have the ability to overcome it. But we're playing small, we're thinking small, we're behaving small. We won't get behind anything of any substance. If we're not being entertained, we're not spending money. I mean, throw a concert. I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I attend concerts. 
I go to places to be and I enjoy things. You know, I'm about to go in here and fire, fire up a cigar. I'm not trying to say that you don't have a, but I mean, you don't have a right to, you gotta have something that allows you to unplug. You gotta have something that allows you to decompress, but you gotta be having something that's compressing you. You gotta have something that's pushing you. You gotta have something that's pressing you at a way that you do need to decompress. You ain't, you don't need to decompress if you're just sitting around rolling with whatever happens. So again, I'm calling everybody to the mat. Everybody needs to be aware of a, a, a responsibility, an agenda, a plan, a strategy that they're participating in. Whether you're donating, whether you're actually there as a mind, you're a part of the think tank, whether you are uh, a person that creates and connects networks, what you have a skill set and it needs some of it needs to be used to help the people of our community because how we go collectively is ultimately how we're going to fare individually. This whole idea, if I get some money, I can sit up and play their game with them and be out there. No, what you don't realize is the sheer number and the, the idea of what may happen if black people totally go left is what keeps a lot of black people from getting totally ran over and mishandled. But if you get out there and you're isolated, you're not a part of the pack. You have something that gives you gives you access to certain things. You don't think they'll just simply manipulate, take it, do something. To, I've seen it happen. How many rich people have you seen, rich black people have you seen recently that they found a reason to sit up and alienate and ostracize them and then turn around and find ways to lure their net worth? Whether we agree with the black people or not, whether we ride with them or not, how many times does it happen? On the flip side, how many times does it happen to whites? Matter of fact, most of what they do is ultimately suppressed and kept under guard. Even when they do get penalized, it doesn't get the press that our stuff gets. We're constantly being painted into a space and a narrative that doesn't completely and totally represent us. And we don't have the power to change it because we won't rally and create the platforms, the spaces, and the capacity to do so. And that's on us. So again, I'm going to put that in, out there and I'm going to challenge us. It's time to step up, time to uh, kill this disconnect and distance that we have. You know, I mean, we literally will write, oh my God, we'll write shaking my head. We'll write, oh, that's a monster. We'll write how horrible, but we won't do anything that can literally change it until it lands on your doorstep. And then you're calling me. Then you're emailing me. Then you're saying, I need your help. And then here I come. But the thing is, maybe if you'd have got involved a little earlier, it may not have gotten to the point it got to. And that's always risk in this world. But the thing is, a lot of it we can eliminate. A lot of it we can manage. But it's going to take a willingness and a commitment to do that. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I do really and truly appreciate you guys lending me your time. I do not take it for granted. And on that note, I'm going to get off. Uh, go to the description box and give. Um, man um, R.I.P. to the young brother who died uh, big up to the teachers who are still uh, holding on and trying to be difference makers my heart goes to all the parents who have lost young children to senseless violence and to the growing number of our young boys who are getting caught up in the legal system. Something has to change. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.